one of the things that's made the US military very strong for years is this idea that we don't tell our troops exactly what to do, we give them an intention and they achieve the mission. Now, one of the things that's being argued is that AI in the future becomes a technology where you can give them that commander's intent, but the battlefield is constantly changing. So I think where, where we're talking about this complexity is not sort of, yes, let's help human targeters hit the right target. It's these sort of offensive AI capabilities where we're writing algorithms for them that give a commander's intent and the questions around how efficacious are those algorithms once you send swarms over the horizon. I think the challenge here is that the in that kind of situation, the, the question is, like, what are your alternatives? The, the issue is, if you don't have that drone swarm in the future, if you don't have the ability to have AI engaged in decision support, and your opponents do, you'll be at a huge disadvantage on the battlefield. And so if you can test these systems and prove that they work, why wouldn't you use every tool you have to try to help your military win and to reduce humanitarian damage. Yeah, um, I would just add, I wouldn't argue against that. I think that we as a country, if I were writing defense policy right now, I would absolutely say we need to develop this technology, that it's moving very, very quickly, that we can't see that technology to our adversary, but that that technology enters a sort of special category of technology, uh, which is highly regulated weapon systems, where, where we are concurrently having bilateral or multilateral conversations with our adversaries saying, we all know that we're gearing up for this, but we can all agree none of us want this to happen. And there's plenty of precedent for that. Treaties we signed around landmines, treaties we signed around chemical weapons, and treaties we've signed around nuclear weapons. And if you get into this argument that, well, this must be done because at the end of the day, it is just the most efficacious system and it must be on the battlefield, I will give you a weapon system that's going to beat AI every single time. So on nuclear weapons, we, I mean, we have gotten together and said that we don't think AI should be involved in making command decisions around, around nuclear weapons. And the reason for that is that there's a very high, there's a, there, is a, there is a risk of, a non-zero risk of error and the consequences are extreme. But the thing is that that problem scales. I mean, that, that problem scales down. So there is always a risk of error with these systems. So the question is, what is an acceptable risk? The position that, that we're putting forward is that there should be some rules. It's, it's, not, it's a nuanced position. It's not an all or nothing thing. We're saying we should try to avoid using these systems in places where they might behave unpredictably.